to the joy of music. Today we bring you a program from one of the most fascinating cities in the world, a musical visit to Edinburgh, with music from the St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral. Oh, praise ye the Lord, praise him in his sanctuary. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. One of the dominant features of the Edinburgh skyline is St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral with its three towering yet graceful spires. This is one of the largest Gothic churches to be erected in the United Kingdom since the Reformation. The nave was consecrated for services in 1879 and is considered to be the seat of the Scottish Episcopal Church. The building is 260 feet long and a single spire rises 276 feet.
When we think of music in Scotland, we always think of bagpipes. And in Edinburgh, we're in the workshop of the Clon Bagpipes, and Joe Hagen is our host here. Correct. Or the owner? The owner, yeah. Uh huh. How did you get interested in making bagpipes? Well, I've always been a wood turner all my life, and uh, again, making bagpipes for a famous bagpipe maker. Uh, about 30 odd years ago. Is there a school here where you learn how to no, make No, it's not a school, it's just small factory, small workshops. Mm -hmm. And I've worked for probably more bagpipe makers than anybody else. I've worked for six bagpipe makers in the past. How long does it take to make a bagpipe? About a day and a half, two days, mm -hmm. to make a good set. So how many do you make in a week? About three or four. And you do all of the silver work and the wooden, the beautiful uh, Yeah, all the carving is all done by hand. Uh -huh. and the, the engraving on that is all done by hand as well. Uh-huh and the silver is all hand spun. It's not pressed out or anything, it's all hand spun the proper way. Are, are there a lot of uh, uh, workshop workshops or, or places that make bagpipes? Well, there's about eight bagpipe makers in the whole of Scotland. And there's eight. about three in Edinburgh uh -huh. and about three in Glasgow. And you're one of the three? I'm one of the three. I think you said your father Edinburgh. was in the organ business. Yeah, he used to build organs and repair them. Mm. All over Edinburgh or Scotland? All over Scotland and England. You know, bagpipes are pipes and organs have pipes. Yeah, so they're similar. You're still smaller. working in the same in the Same, same sort of lane, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you like bagpipe music? Oh, yeah, I love bagpipe music. I love making them. It's nice to see the finished article. Sometimes you don't want to part with that, no? Well, thank you, Joe, for giving no us a, a little tour. And thank yeah, you so much. I'll show much. you a wee bit. <laughs> Thanks very much. at the end of the Royal Mile, 
which is the popular name given to the fascinating string of historic streets linking two royal residences of the castle and the Holyrood Palace. This was the thoroughfare of medieval Edinburgh. Today, the Royal Mile retains its distinctive character with wines and closes, every one of which has a romantic tale attached to it. We are standing now in front of the palace, which is the residence of the Queen when she visits Scotland. Even now, the Gordon Highlanders are practicing for the visit of the Queen in one week.
Here at the St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral, we are honored to be speaking with Dr. Dennis Townhill, who is organist and master of the choristers, and Mr. Nigel Murray, who is director of the St. Mary's Music School. Welcome to the Joy of Music. Dr. Townhill, I've noticed that the choristers are made up of mostly boys, but there are a few girls in it as well. How did that happen? It happened because girls came into the school when the school was reorganized uh, as a specialist uh, music school. Of course, uh, girls came in as instrumentalists uh, at the same age as the choristers between uh, seven and nine. And so, of course, the question then was asked, well, why shouldn't the girls sing in the choir? And uh, we decided that uh, that would be a good thing. And so we are, I think, uh, almost unique, certainly in the United Kingdom. So the music school is made up of choristers and uh, members of the orchestra, is that right? And instrumentalists, yes. And instrumentalists. Pianists, oboe players, oh. lots of string players, as you've seen. How many students are in the school? Well, counting choristers as well, is for, about 45 at the moment. Mm -hmm. There'd be about 30 instrumentalists and about 15 choristers. How often does the orchestra rehearse? They're so fine as well as the choristers. Thank you. Well, the, the orchestra rehearses twice a week, but I think the orchestra is as good as it is, well, it's quite good, uh, because of the very high standard of chamber music, string quartets and string quintets and piano quartets mm -hmm. that goes on in the, in the school, and that enables us to have a very high standard of uh, orchestra as well. Mm -hmm. Well, we're very honored to be here in the cathedral, and we thank you so much for sharing these wonderful musical gifts with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Scotland's gracious capital city since the 12th century, Edinburgh is set on a series of spectacular hills and valleys. Steeped in history, Edinburgh can trace its origins to the 5th century. Dominating the city skyline is the world-famous castle standing proudly on its soaring rock, testament to Edinburgh's leading role in Scottish history. A fortress has stood on this site since at least 600 AD. Castle Rock is undeniably the birthplace of Edinburgh. Today on The Joy of Music, we have brought you a special program from Scotland, a musical visit to Edinburgh. With the beauty of this city and the surrounding landscapes, we can more appreciate the beauty and gifts that God has given us all to enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music. The Joy of Music and Diane Bish wish to thank British Airways, the world's favorite airline, for their support in helping make this program possible.